Will 2023 be the hottest year on record? One group is virtually certain it will be, and the numbers really tell the story on this one. Yeah, following a red-hot October globally that brought an exceptional temperature anomaly, Earth is now about 2.57 degrees Fahrenheit above the pre-industrial average, the warmest October on record. According to a new report from the Copernicus Climate Change Service, or C3S, the EU's Earth Monitoring Agency. And here at home, just take a look at the numbers for the United States. This was last month alone. And Bob, we, we set a lot of records, particularly across the western part of the country. Each one of those icons represents a top 10 warmest October on record. 13 were the warmest all time. Yeah, I mean, it was smoking hot. I remember, and it's still pretty warm right now in November. So is this just a, what is this, an anomaly? Or is what's contributing to the warmer temperatures and the hotter temperatures around the world? We don't know quite yet. Yeah, here to break this all down with us is Carlo Buontempo. He's the C3S director. Thanks for being with us here on Fox Weather. Let's focus in on this year. July came in as the hottest month, any month, on record yeah. across the globe, while August was the warmest August on record, coming in just behind July as the hottest month on record. And now October clearly has broken a record, too. Can you talk to us about your findings and the data that you looked at? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're uh, spot on. It's, uh, it's a sequence of extreme events. It started in July. As you said, we got the warmest July on record, which happened to be also the warmest month on record. And now our record go back to January 1940. So it's a, a relatively long record. And in that record, we have never seen anything like that. And so after the July, we got the warmest August record, as you said, and the warmest September as well. So October comes as a fourth month in a row. Uh, with a uh, um, record-breaking temperature for that time of year. And what is also um, particularly impressive uh, or, or worrying, uh, depending on the way you look at it, is the anomaly with respect to the previous warmest October, which is nearly half a, a centigrade degree uh, above. So the, the previous record was 2019, and now we are 0 0.4 degrees uh, centigrade uh, above that record. It's, it's really quite, quite dramatic. Wow. And there are a number of reasons why we see that. Um, we know that we are getting to an El Nino year and an El Nino temperature tend to go uh, higher than usual. But it's not just the tropical Pacific. So what we have seen this, we have seen this year is really happening all over the all over the world. Is the North Atlantic is what happening in the U.S. and in Canada? What's happening in Europe and in Asia that is contributing to all of this? So we see the trend going for the last couple of months now. What do you think the trend is going into 2024? About the same kind of thing. Uh, well, 2024, if you look back uh, in, in, uh, in previous cases of El Nino, we know that the year following the peak of El Nino, El Nino, as you know, peaks around Christmas, uh, and, and we do expect uh, this year to be no exception in that respect. And if you look at the 12 months after the peak of El Nino, this is typically when we see uh, a peak in the global mean temperature. So the fact that we are already at record-breaking uh, level now uh, clearly uh, put uh, 2024 in a, in a sort of tight spot, and it's very likely to be um, yet another record-breaking year. It's not, it's not just the Nino, it's really the, the warming of the climate system that is making uh, a lot of this signal emerge from the internal variability noise. So we have seen this year, but the previous uh, nine years of record are all happening in the last decades. It's, it's, um, is a signal of the fact that this is not a one-off event. It's not just a, a strange fluctuation of the climate system. It's really part of a, of a global warming pattern that is affecting all continents, as the IPCC stated in their report. And, and Carlo, when we're looking at, at the entire planet, what kind of role does sea ice play in this? October was the sixth month in a row that Antarctic sea ice levels remained at record lows, about 11 percent under uh, for the monthly average. What kind of role does that play in this? Well, you're absolutely right. And, and actually, I think what's happening in Antarctica is particularly relevant because we haven't seen a big trend in Antarctica sea ice for a long time. You know, while the Arctic sea ice was declining uh, rapidly at time and we, we got uh, a number of uh, record uh, breaking years in, in the Arctic sea ice, the Antarctica was quite stable until uh, uh, just a, a decade ago or so. And this year, we, we got a massive loss of sea ice, unprecedented loss of sea ice in Antarctica, including by exposing 
the dark uh, surface of the ocean uh, rather than the uh, highly reflective sea ice, then we, we naturally uh, are more prone to absorb more radiation. So it's the, it's the sea ice feedback, the albedo feedback. And this will increase inevitably the temperature of the ocean in that part of the ocean. If you look at the analysis, though, it's not the, the, just the tropical, oh, sorry, the uh, Antarctic sea ice that matters. It's what happened in the Pacific because of the Nino and what happened in the extratropics. So in the mid latitude, north and south hemisphere in particular this year in the northern hemisphere where the temperature over land has been particularly high. Yeah, and as we mentioned, the signals into 2024 pointing yeah, toward another hot one globally. You can read more about this, a lot to unpack. We have a full report and, and a look at some of the data we were just discussing right. at foxweather.com. Carlo Buontempo, C3S director, thanks for talking with us here on Fox Weather. Great information. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.